Hello my sewing bees, I'm Suki and welcome to my sewing studio. Today I'm going to give you a tour of the cabinetry and the chair and all the goodies that are inside the drawers and how I organize my sewing space. So come on! right here because honestly as much as I love sewing I spend most of my time in front of my computer because our business is designing sewing patterns so this is where I spend a lot of the time and I've got my notepad and you know all my things ready to go so the top two drawers are pretty much just for work you know like my calendar and my markers and like my scissors just basic office supply type things and in the second drawer is where I have my, I start to get into the creative part, like I have my embroidery sketch pad, so if I have idea, ideas or design things I want to sketch out, just again some regular office supplies, my calculator, checkbook, stuff like that. Um, my third drawer starts to get into some more creative things as well, where I've got all of my sewing machine manuals and my extra presser feet books. Um, I've got Bernina's and Burnett, so I have all my manuals and stuff in there. And then the bottom two drawers are dedicated to all of our filming equipment. When you film and do video, <laughs> there's lots of stuff that goes with it. Uh, this is just like microphones and extra cameras. So I will save that for another video if you're interested in all the video equipment and the cameras and the lighting and all that stuff. We'll save that for another day. I do want to talk about my chair because since we've been in this studio area, I have gone through like seven different chairs. <laughs> I'm very particular about how I sit. I have to sit in front of a computer a lot, but then I also need a, a chair that's going to work for my sewing space. So I'm going to save this for later, but this is the chair. It's wonderful, amazing, and I think the thing I love about it the most is that the arms go up, which is great because then this is for sewing, this is for office work. But for right now, I'm just going to scoot the chair out of the way because I really want to show you this awesome little caddy. It has rolling wheels and it's got these hooks that it comes with that you can put all of your extra things on. And then it's just for me, it's my storage for anything that's pressing related. So I've got my best press, also my spray adhesives, extra little irons, um, pressing tools that are up here. I mean, I even have our little spoon <laughs> that you can see how this is used in one of our dollar store videos. So yeah, this is, this is a wonderful little handy a rolling cart and it's really narrow and it's it's uh, not too deep and it's not too tall so it fit right underneath my cabinets perfectly here and while I'm down here too I will just mention that we did a lot of research on cabinets and tables and because I need something that is good for computer work and filming and sewing this ended up being a really great solution for us this is from Ikea this is one of their table tops and then the two end pieces for the drawers were great I will say though that it's supposed to have a leg underneath, but it took, I don't know, like two months before the leg was available. And in that time, the table did sink a little. So if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't have put everything up until I had that center leg. So for me though, it's great, it works fine. But if I had to do it again, I would probably just have maybe thought about what it's gonna look like when it's all done. The reason I didn't want the leg underneath here though is because I wanted the space so I could go from my computer Maybe I have a serger set up here and I can just kind of go back and forth and do it like that. Anyways, now let's look into the drawers over here. Okay, so now let's go into this one set of drawers. This is definitely where I keep all my primary sewing notions. So let's start from the bottom to the top. And at the bottom, I keep all of my tube turning things, like of course the easy point and turner, we have those in here. There's um, extra point turners, like traditional point turners like this. Uh, there, this is kind of where all my extra notions live if I have duplicates, um, extra wonder clips, and just kind of like all kinds of little extra turning things. The next drawer is where all of my sewing patterns live, my garment patterns. I don't do a lot of garment sewing anymore, I just don't, I don't have the time for it, but as I do, this is where all my patterns live. I used to have, probably all these drawers could have been filled up with garment patterns, but you know, our, our hobbies change over the years. However, I will say that I'm really excited about the golden rule, the luteral system for making garments. We actually did a video uh, showing this system where the whole concept is you take two measurements from your body and then you can make an entire garment following these little tiny miniature patterns. So we have a video showing what's inside the box of this and more videos to come on how to actually use the system. 
Now in the next drawer is all kinds of stuff. We've got, I wanna first point out, these little trays are great. You get these from the dollar store and the ones that I found all fit into one another. So two of these equals one size of this. And there's just all kinds of things in here. Like this is all my marking pens, some glue sticks. I've got all my glue sticks in here. I've got more marking tools. These are all my chalks and waxes. And then this is a whole thing of just fusible web tapes. I uh, love using these for different projects, so I have lots of these. Um, just some different seam guides. I've got different little seam guides over here, and this whole basket right here is just the, the little laser lights that are great for, uh, I've got videos on this, we'll have a link in the description, um, but this is the, the different laser systems where if you're gonna do crosshairs or straight lines, so I have a whole basket of just that. And then I've got my bias tape makers, extra measuring tapes, um, garment mat marker, or, uh, like weights are down there, pattern weights. And then of course I have a whole basket of all of my sew tights. So this is a very, very useful drawer. This drawer probably gets, uh, probably definitely the second most use, and this is all my needles. I love having lots of needles in stock. This is the little MyPad that ke keeps all my needles that are in my machines organized. And then just throughout this whole drawer are just different packs of needles. Some of these back here are my older needles that I just, you know, I collect needles. I get them and I, I collect them. Um, and then I've got a whole bunch of stuff here that's for my hand sewing. So I've got different thread waxes and hand sewing tools and then all my hand sewing needles. So this is my needle drawer. And then this drawer is definitely the most go-to drawer for me. I got all my wonder clips here. I got all my fray checks and seam sealants, my tape, because I use clear tape a lot. Uh, different pins, straight pins. Um, this is a little bag that I got when I was in an airport years and years ago, and I just literally keep safety pins in there. And back here is just more, more pins. I've got you know applique pins and T-pins. Lots and lots of pins. So that's what's inside this drawer. So I get asked all the time, where do I store my sewing machines? Because I have a lot of machines. I work with companies and I have some machines that are on, on loan and then I own certain machines. So I remember telling my husband when we were laying this all out, I was like, Bear, I want to have all my machines out. I want a machine here and here and here. And, and he just kept reminding me that that's just, you know, you're not going to have any place to actually get any work done and cutting and, and whatever. So I fought it, <laughs> but then finally I gave in and I said, okay, what do you have in mind? So we went to Ikea and he found this shelving system that is fantastic. I love how it's open. So it, it's really pretty. You can see the machines that are on display and then yet it's easy to get them in and out. So I'm gonna step back and show you what they all are for. At the top is my Burnett four thread serger, the B64. And then the second one is my Burnett, uh, it's a cover stitch machine, the B42. The third one is my Bernina L460, which is a four thread serger. And then the next one is actually an embroidery machine that does embroidery and sewing. It's a Burnett B79. And I probably use the, that one and the Bernina just above it out of this whole rack. I use those the most. So that's kind of why they're positioned where they are. And then the bottom shelf is my Bernina 790 plus, which is my big boy embroidery machine that does the largest embroidery hoop I, I have. So that's where I I store all of my machines when they're not in use and it is a wonderful small footprint to keep everything nice and clean and organized and out of the way. Okay so now all my machines are stored over in that direction but I just wanted to briefly touch on the place where I keep my sewing machine set up the most of the time. The machine that I use probably 90% of the time is this little Burnett B37. It's just a good basic sewing machine. I really, really love it. Um, it's lightweight, so I'm able to move it around the sewing room as needed. Um, this is another flexi spot table, but I really wanted to talk about this right here because for those of you that have small spaces and not a lot of power outlet options, this is a really good option. It's basically just a power strip that my husband double-sided sticky taped to the bottom of the table, and there is a couple of USB ports as well. This has been a lifesaver, and I because I only have two power plugs over on this side of the room, and I just I really love it, and I wanted to show you all that is a good idea to something to have 
for a small sewing space. And then I also have my ironing, my little ironing station. I use this in probably 90% of my videos when I'm making videos on projects. It's um, an Aliso, it's a little tiny portable, very powerful iron, and then the little quilters cotton press that I use. So I actually use this all the time. And then to go along with all of my machines that I have on that side of the room, of course I have two of them that are embroidery machines. And I actually just store the embroidery units over here in the corner. So when we were designing and laying out the room, we actually did keep in mind that we needed a place for those embroidery units. And I have to share with you one of my prized possessions in my sewing studio, which is actually today's sponsor is FlexiSpot. My FlexiSpot tables are amazing. I love them for so many reasons. I can sew, I can embroider, I can cut, I can go from sitting to standing in split seconds. It's just, it's amazing. So let me show you my big FlexiSpot so that I can kind of give you an idea of what exactly they do. This one I love the most because of its size. It's, it's really wide, it's, um, it's wide, it's deep. The height can go really low to really high. I usually keep it set so that it's the same height as my Ikea tables over here, but you do have multiple settings depending on which model you get. And this one here, I can go, like I said, really, really high really low. The reason I like this one in particular is because it went is the lowest it would go and I actually have it set for the memory number one. So I'm just gonna press number one and you can see how fast and quiet. Very, very quiet. Now when I'm sitting in a chair, I can lean right up underneath here and it's the perfect height for me to do sewing. Now if I'm cutting, I would definitely want it higher. So my cutting setting, I haven't done yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it to where I like for it to be for cutting which typically should be where your elbows are. That's kind of the general rule that you should have it cut where your elbows are straight or like, you know, horizontal, I guess. And so like, let's just say it's 33.5. I would just hit the memory, memory and three. And just like that, it was set there. Now, so my number two is my setting to line it up perfectly with my Ikea tables. And then let's go back to number three. So in a, couple of seconds, it goes right back to the height that you want. Now I have to tell you, my husband added a couple of power strips. He just double-sided sticky taped them underneath the flexi spot table because I do get questions on what this is. And it's because we have so many cords that we need for filming. And then it also, because I have two of them here, we have extra USB cables. But I'm able to have everything I need all in one place and I don't have to look for any extra power cords. It's such a lifesaver. And uh, I have to tell you too, one of the other things I love about my Flexi Spot is the fact that I can move them myself. I don't need any help. I can get them positioned where I want them. I can rotate this. I just, I love the ability to do it all myself. I don't need to ask for anybody's help when I'm using my Flexi Spot. So now let's go ahead and move this all out of the way so I can show you my drawers. So I have to share with you all my trash can. I know this kind of sounds silly, but when I was looking for a trash can, I have to keep a lot of things in mind. And you at home might be the same way. We have two dogs, so anything that goes into my trash, our little dog likes to pick up out of the trash and run around with. So we had to first get a trash that had a trash can that had a lid on it, and then I wanted one that was like low profile and it would fit into small spaces. So I just I have to brag on my trash can here because it does all of that and then I, while I'm sewing, I can lift it up with my foot, throw my trash in there and then I know that my dogs are not going to get it, which especially if you have pets in a sewing area, you've got threads and lace and elastic and all these little things are things that you do not want your dogs and your cats to get a hold of. So anyways, I have to show a little love for my trash can, but now let's look in my drawers. <laughs> that sounded funny. <laughs> Okay, so starting from the bottom, this is the side of the room that's dedicated to machine embroidery and some stabilizers and things like that. So this bottom drawer is kind of like my go-to small quantities of different stabilizers and interfacings, like this is just a fusible woven interfacing. I have a little batting in here. In our walk-in closet, my husband and my room, that's where all of the big portions of this are, but I, it, I just like to keep something small over here just so I have access to it quickly. The next drawer is, oh, and you know what else? I always forget back here is one of my, my Yazi bags. And inside this one is all of my uh, hand sewing 
supplies and stuff. So in here I have all my hand sewing supplies. But yeah, I forget it's back here until I'm looking for it. But it fits in there real nice. So yeah, forgot about that. Okay, so the next drawer has all of my go-to embroidery stabilizers, things that I'm going to need at, a, you know, really quick. Um, I don't have to dig through tubs that are in our closet in the bedroom. But yeah, that's where I keep all my primary stabilizers. And the next drawer is all of my presser feet for my, bur my Burnett machines. Because my Burnett and my Bernina have different presser feet, that's why I keep them all separate. So I've got all my presser feet here. And all the bobbins are also different, so I keep all my bobbins for the Burnett in here. And then also all of the little, um, well, yeah, this actually is Bernina, but I keep my Bernina serger presser feet in here. And then all of my Burnett serger presser feet. So that's where all those are stored. And then some extra bobbins. And then this would be my Bernina drawer exclusively for presser feet and for bobbins. Um, the presser feet for Bernina are, they're, they're of really nice quality. I do keep them in these little containers. I've, I have instructions that came with them because I did buy a lot of feet used. Um, most of them I have the, the instructions though, but I keep the foot and the little booklet for instructions inside. And it seems to fit all of them except for the larger feet like a ruffler, uh, the gathering feet. So I keep all that in there. And then my top drawer is another little kind of go-to notions. Um, this is my hexagon scissor case. This is where I keep all my Suki Sew so scissors and just a little pin cushion. Um, this is a little rope bowl that my friend Chris made me. <laughs> so, um, and then in here is another Yazi bag and this is definitely my favorite one of my favorite Yazi bags because I have all my primary notions that I use. And so as I'm kneading them, I can just take this whole bag out and put it wherever I need it for sewing for that day. So this is where I keep all those go-to notions. Okay, so now let's go over here. At the bottom is where I store all of my regular sewing thread. And this is a yet a again, another Yazi bag. This is all of my sewing thread for, for my Mettler. I've got different kinds of threads, boxes of threads. And then the next couple drawers are all machine embroidery stuff. So de depending if it's my Burnett or my Bernina, uh, different embroidery accessories, extra power cords. I do want to show that I label everything because when you have more than one machine, it can get confusing as to what power cord goes with what, what presser feet, or excuse me, what foot control. So I do have that all labeled. And then I do have all of my hoops in here and same for in here. And then this, I had just like a little extra screw, screwdriver set I have in here. And then again, more presser feet or foot controls, hoops and power cords. And one more drawer of embroidery products. You know, I've got more power cords, embroidery hoops, and, and then this is my Bernina 790 plus extension table. But you can see how large the drawers are. They're really deep and the, top three are shorter and then the bottom three are a little taller so it just depends on what you know what you got to put in there this is a drawer i love i'm very very proud of this drawer it's got all of my rotary cutters my extra blades all my extra scissors i'm definitely a scissor person as you can see and i like to keep everything really organized this is all of my extra screwdrivers and allen wrenches for my machines i've got different snips smaller scissors right here and all of my pliers um, some pressing sheets like the little um, the uh, applefuse mat from gypsy quilter again just little tiny bits of pieces this is kind of fun I will share this with you all this is my oldest pair of scissors uh, I got this when I was in high school and they're actually called oak tag scissors they are definitely the strongest scissors ever. They were designed for garment in the garment industry to cut oak tag, which is the really heavy cardboard type material they use to make the um, basic slopers in the pattern industry. I'm not even sure they use these anymore because everything's done on the computer, but those were given to me by a friend in high school. So I always, this is one of my treasures. And then the top drawer are all my rulers. This was a little trickier. I was used to having rulers hang on the wall but I just didn't really want, I just didn't want that in this space. I wanted everything to be kind of put away so everything's real pretty. This is the hardest ruler <laughs> to find a place for, but I finally discovered that if I just lay it in here, it, it, it does a good job. If I just lay it in there, right in horizontally with the drawer, it's fine. 
And I have a couple of little templates in here, um, just pattern drafting rulers and stuff too. Okay, let's go to the next drawer. So starting at the bottom, we have more thread. Actually, the bottom three drawers are all just a bunch of different threads, sewing, embroidery, all mixed in together based on color. So, you know, I've got the blues and the greens and then whites. And then I've got all like extra packets of threads that I've got, but then I've got like the browns and the blacks and some more grays. And the next couple drawers though, um, this one is all machine embroidery. These are just threads that I use a lot, colors that are part of like collections that I use and things that I've done for Bernina that I, I just, I have a lot of different spools for. This is my bobbin thread that I just kind of keep right here because when you're embroidering, your bobbin thread is always a lighter weight than your top threads. And then these two, I have to say, I'm probably the most excited about these drawers because I think if you have a serger out there, you're going to totally appreciate what I'm about to show you. These two are for my serger cones. And what's so cool is they fit in here perfectly. I can get eight spools per row and there's, there's not enough room for another spool. So it gives you a little bit of movement so that you can move them up and down. So if you're taking out spools, it's real easy. And you'll see that I just have them, you know, uh, like large to small, small to large and so forth. And then over here, I just have a few extra boxes of different random threads. And then on my top drawer, just look how pretty it is. <laughs> I just love how it lays and I can always see what colors for my serger cones that I need and it's just great. I do always buy serger spools in sets of four because my machines only go up to four threads anyways, but I always get at least four of a particular color. So I wanna show you what's underneath here. The way that we designed this was we have two smaller cabinets of drawers on either side and then the two wider ones in the middle, which gave us this little space underneath here. And we looked and did a lot of research and we saw a lot of different artists and creatives and how they organized it. And we had seen one artist, she was specifically a painter, and she stored all of her uh, canvases in like shorter things under here. And I thought that's perfect, that's exactly what we need. So underneath here I have, I have just different things. I've got my light boxes, I've got all my rotary cutter mats, and I think I have pressing, yeah, I've got my, my wool pressing mats here. And it's just so nice and convenient to have everything underneath here. It's out of the way, yet it looks really clean and neat. So now let's head to the very last set of drawers. Ready? So in this last row of drawers is where I keep anything that's more of the crafty nature. Markers, glues, uh, I'm trying to think what some of the other things down here, extra seam seam sealants like fray check anything that's like extra like that i've also got my little ironing set in here because uh, if you know you should never blow air into your machine when you're cleaning it you should always pull it out so i've got like a little vacuum set here again like i said there's markers these are old garment making labels and then in the next drawer is all my snap things so snap and hardware like i just got these recently the little lobster clips and the d-ring so i haven't had a chance to organize it yet but in here i have all my snaps like old-fashioned i shouldn't say old-fashioned but traditional metal snaps and then on the other side are all my little hooks and eyes i've had this little it's like a tackle box that i got in college so i've had this for a very long time um, any of the snaps that you use for like the key fobs, I have little collections of different colors. And then I have, of course have my snap tools to actually apply them with. And then back here I have glue sticks, even though I don't do a whole lot of glue. I don't know, I don't use my hot glue that often, but when I do, it's nice to have everything ready to go. And then the other things I have back here are all of my crystals for like my hot fix and all of my tools to do it with. So I've got my glue sticks back here and all of my mini irons. And yeah, I've got two glue sticks. I've got my little clover mini iron, which I don't use that often, but again, when I do, I'm glad that I have it here. And then my hot fix, which is like adding crystals to your fun projects, making them all pretty. Let's see if I can get it back in now. 
to cut back in. <laughs> okay. And then in the next drawer, I have lots of things in here. This kind of is a collecting drawer for like clip, clips and hooks, uh, D rings, anything extra that's for purse making, bag making, hardware, uh, snaps for purse making, um, magnets, all kinds of stuff in here. And then, of course, like little tassels. So anything that's like a little accessory to go with bag making, I'm going to keep all of that in here. And then in the next drawer is more serger thread, but this is specifically the stuff that is like the stretchy serger thread. So I have all of that is organized in here. And then in the last drawer right here is all my decorative serger threads. And I recently went through all of it and I decided to, you know, some, cause thread doesn't last forever. And it's really a good idea to keep your threads stored away, even though they sell racks that you can put on the wall. What those racks on the wall really do is it helps you collect dust and it collects light. And thread is, uh, it's, it, it breaks down. It's, it's a fiber. So it breaks down over time if light is on it. If you have a spool of thread that's facing the light, this side will not only get dusty, but the light will actually discolor it. So it's just something to think about. If you have the opportunity to have your threads on the wall, that's great. It's beautiful. However, something to keep in mind is if you have them in a drawer, it's definitely better for keeping it out of the dust and keeping it away, keeping away from dust and out of the light. Okay, so since uh, my sewing studio is essentially our dining room, I try and keep everything nice and tidy most of the time, but I, I do have the privilege of having a couple of places where I keep other things. And in the hallway closet, on this side is where our laundry machine is, but on this side, it has been gifted to me by the family. <laughs> so I'm able to keep this for me. I keep my Laura Star ironing system here, and then if I pull this out of the way and I need to set it up, it's much easier to set that up instead of keeping it up all the time. So in here is where I have all my extra things, uh, zippers and ribbon and extra um, pre-cuts, vintage sewing machine magazine or vintage sewing magazines, elastic. I mean, everything that you can imagine that's extra for your sewing stuff, buttons. But without this, before, this used to be underneath our bed, and it was just a hassle to get to. So we rearranged, and I was able to put everything into this area. And like I said, I'm able to take my Laura Star ironing system. I'm able to take it out real easily by myself, set it up, and then I could just close this back again. And then in this closet in here, I just have uh, more stabilizers. It's nothing, nothing pretty to look at. It's just a couple of tubs of stabilizers. And then the last place I wanted to show you is where I store my fabric. And it's in plain sight, and it's part of our living room. So come on. So since my husband and I have been together the last few years, the way that my fabric has evolved is, is completely changed. I used to have tubs and I'd have a whole cabinet full of it in my closet uh, to really just realizing that I don't need all this fabric. I just need the fabric that I need for the project that I'm working on. And what's nice about having, you know, buying what you need at the time is you're, you're not spending a lot of money on your stash. You're able to keep it organized. And so I was able to get all the fabric condensed into these six tubs and those two tubs. And in, so inside each of these, I've got everything color coordinated, nice and organized, folded. It's really pretty. This is all of more like garment type fabric. Um, these little towers with the shelf, the little baskets, I mean, you can get these anywhere. We were able to find all of this on Amazon um, and it fits in really nice with our, the rest of our house decor. And then down here on the bottom four shelves are all of my sewing books, which I wish I had my books displayed more. However, it's not a bad thing because I'm able to come over here and pull out just the books that I need and then push them all back in. So it is nice that everything is organized over here so that it's easily, uh, you know, I can see it really easily, I can get to it. And then I've got other surfaces around my sewing space where I can lay it all out. So let's head back to the sewing studio. So now we're back in the sewing studio where I have all my drawers with my embroidery and my threads and all those things. And I just wanted to show you a couple of more things. 
I think it's important when you're designing your sewing space, whether it's in the middle of the living area where I literally, I can see the kitchen, I can see where my husband and my daughter are sitting and watching TV. It, this, it's, it's a part of our home. However, we run a business, so we've got the shipping department over there and we've got the printing section there. And I mean, it is what it is. We, we live and we also run a business here. But no matter where you're at, I do think it's important that you decorate. I think you should have things that inspire you, things that get you excited about your craft. And so that's why you see the wall behind me. This is definitely where we spent a lot of time curating and figuring out what we wanted where. Like this machine, this has a lot of special meaning to me. My husband and I drove like a four hour round trip to get this little machine. It only cost $20. <laughs> I mean, we even did a video on like cleaning it up, but it ultimately just became a really beautiful display in the sewing room. And then I've got this little machine here, which I ended up getting from a lady on Etsy from the Ukraine. So got vintage things, um, things that just have some sentimental meaning to me around, but I think it's important that you have that. Of course, we run a business and I do YouTube videos. So this is what you usually see my smiling face on for our weekly lives. And, but I think it's really, it represents me and our brand really good. But I really hope you enjoyed the studio tour. And if you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you like to see things like this and sewing tutorials and all kinds of fun things on sewing notions. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.